This is a short video about uh, an introduction to limits of functions. So the first thing we'll start off with is what's a cluster point of a set. So if you're given a set of the real numbers, say A, we're going to call real number C. And notice I'm not saying that C has to be an element of A, just any real number C, we'll call it a cluster point of that set A if the following happens. So for every delta, there should exist an element of A such that um, this says that x is not equal to that cluster point C, so there should exist a separate element of A in case C maybe was in A. So there should exist some element of A that is within delta of C. So in other words, we should be able to get arbitrarily close uh, to C with points in A. And so to give you a picture here, if you started with any delta and you made this window around C, what I'm saying is I don't care how small or big this window is, we should always be able to find a point from A in that window. Maybe recall some notation too. I've tried to highlight in yellow here just what is that little interval from C minus delta to C plus delta. That little open interval is uh, sometimes denoted by this notation here, which we'll call a neighborhood, a delta neighborhood of C. Actually, I think I wanted to switch where the C and the delta go. Oops, I think I need to do that. So C here, delta there. There we go. But anyway, it's C minus delta and C plus delta. Okay. So that is the idea of a cluster point. So let's look at a concrete example and maybe how we use, again, this uh, delta definition of what a cluster point of a set is. So let's say my set is the interval from zero to one on the real line, which I've drawn for you over here and colored in red, and I'm not including the endpoints. And let me tell you what the cluster points of that set are. So the cluster points of A are any point that's actually just in A. So why is that? So let's let C be any point in A, and let's let delta just be any positive real number. So what we, can we do from the Archimedean property? I know that I could pick a natural number so that uh, the reciprocal of that natural number is smaller than that delta. And uh, what else can I say? I know then that I could pick that natural number also big enough so that uh, C minus one over N is also bigger than zero. And why is that important for me? Uh, just because C is a number that's between zero and one. So what have I got then? Uh, maybe in a picture, this should be my x then. So x is c minus one over n. So what I'm trying to say is if c is somewhere like right here, well then c minus one over n is somewhere right here. And the point is um, that is another element that's within that, that delta window. So what else? So what's another cluster point of that set? Zero, so zero should be a cluster point. And so how would you show that? So let delta be bigger than zero. Choose a natural number n so that again, one over n is less than delta. Then in that case, just let x equal one over n. That's an element of a, the interval from zero to one. And uh, such that uh, x is within delta of zero in that case. So again, we've found uh, for any neighborhood I put around zero, I could find something that's in that neighborhood. And the last one is similarly just the other, the other part at the end of that interval there is one. One's a cluster point as well. And uh, let delta be bigger than zero. So choose, how do you show it actually? Right, that's what I'm getting at. So let delta be bigger than zero. Choose n and n so that one over n again is less than delta. And now one minus one over n is still bigger than zero. So really all I'm trying to say with all this good stuff here, this should be your x that's in a, and that guarantees that uh, that x is within delta of one. So again, in a picture, all I'm trying to say is, for the first part, if you were to put any point right here, yes, you could find a little interval around it that still contains points of zero, one. Or if you were to have zero as your point, any interval you put around it is gonna have some points from zero, one in it, any points in the red. And similarly, the last one was, for any little interval you put around one here, yes, you're gonna have some points from the red in there as well. That's all we're trying to justify with, uh, again, this kind of formal language. And I think I've got another one for you. So let's let A be the set zero to one. So I'm sorry, just zero and one. So just those two elements. Those are the only two things that I've colored there. And so what I claim is that this set A has no cluster points at all. So how would you show that? So let's let C be an element, just not in our set. Again, it's not interesting in that case when there's just these two here. So again, this says a real number, but not zero or one. So why don't we take delta to just be the smaller, and femum's kind of a funny word here, but we've been using it a lot in this class. Take delta to be the smaller of whatever the absolute value of C is or whatever the absolute value of C minus one is. And why did I choose those two things? Well, absolute value of C is the distance of C from zero, and absolute value of C minus one is the distance of C from one. 
So I'm going to pick the smaller of the two to be my delta. Well, if, uh, if, if absolute value of C is the smaller of the two, well then, uh, the distance from zero to C is not less than delta. And similarly, if uh, absolute value of C minus one is the smaller of those two in that set, well then, one minus C is not, the, the distance from one to C is not less than delta either. And so in that case, what can I say then? So maybe what have I tried to do for you? In a picture, what the symbols are trying to do is I have found a window that is something like this, say, where that window around C, this yellow, it does not contain zero and it does not contain one. So that is what this, uh, what I'm trying to do a little more formally with what this delta is. So that's what this is trying to say. And so in that case, what have we found? We've just found a neighborhood of, of uh, that supposed cluster point C, right, that doesn't contain any points from my set A. And so therefore, no C can be a cluster point of A. All right, so uh, what do I wanna show? Just one more characterization of what it means to be a cluster point. So we'll say that a real number is a cluster point of a subset of A, uh, if and only if there exists a sequence and all those points should be in A, the subset of the real line you care about, such that that sequence converges to C. And what I wanna make sure is that I don't just have like the constant sequence and uh, so A n cannot be C for all n. So how would you prove this? So let's go the forward direction. So let's suppose that C is a cluster point of A and we wanna build a sequence from A that converges to C. So how could we do that? So we'll use that definition of a cluster point. Um, I know, and it looks like I went back to this notation. So for each natural number, why don't I put the window around C of uh, length one over N on both sides. So remember this maybe in a picture is if here's C, I'm saying go C plus one over N and C minus one over N. So then by hypothesis there, by hypothesis that C is a cluster point, well that's an excellent interval around C, therefore there should exist somebody named AN that's in, within that interval. And so now the idea is, well, you could do that for each natural number. So if I was to make you know, a smaller interval, say this one here, then I should be able to find another point of A. And so these shrinking intervals, right, are going to build me a sequence that converges to C. So that's maybe a picture of what I'm about to do. And uh, so to finish this off then, this direction, so that yields a sequence of points of the form AN, where what can I always guarantee? Well, C is always within one over N of the point AN for every single N. But then now, if you took the limit of both sides, this goes to zero, therefore the distance from AN to C goes to zero as N gets large, which is another way to say that the limit of AN is equal to C. Maybe another way to think about this too, you could use the squeeze theorem to try to say that the limit of AN is equal to C. However you want to get to that conclusion, go for it. So that's the forward direction, and now let's just do the backward direction. So let's suppose that uh, the sequence actually converges to C, where the sequence is entirely in A, and I don't have any of the ANs actually equaling C. So I want to conclude that C is a cluster point. So I got to use that cluster point definition, which remember that said that for any delta, we should be able to find a point from A within that little delta neighborhood of C. So, well, for any delta, why don't I let n, so I guess maybe, how should I read this here? I'm supposing that a n converges to c, so I'm kind of using that epsilon definition. So for any epsilon, you can go far enough out in your sequence so that the points in the sequence are within that epsilon of your limit. Instead of epsilon, what I do? I use the delta, just because that's what we did in the cluster point definition. So, in that case then, if I always have that, what's another way to say this stuff here that says that for any delta, I've got this neighborhood of C, of length delta, right? On each side, I guess I should say, that contains a point of A, right? I'm always guaranteed to find all the rest of the points in that sequence should be within that little neighborhood. In particular, there's at least one point of A in there. So thus, that says that C is a cluster point of A, since we could do that for any delta. And so that finishes the proof of that part there. I think there is, oops, I think I'm gonna save that to the next video.